KZI. Woo! It's go, 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 go time. Tick, tick, boom. We're bringing the noise. Go, baby, we bringing our toys. Separate me from the boys. Chopper be singing, should be on the voice. Bang, bang, we gon' ride out. Gang, gang, we don't die out. Want it like this, ain't no timeouts. Tell me who really gon' find out. Ride it. We get ride it, ride it. Ride it. We get ride it, ride it. We be disturbing the peace. Good morning, Austin. Welcome to the dog days of summer. Welcome to the Fans View, KAZI 88.7. Travis Kent, alongside, to my right, Jamal January. Jamal, how you doing this morning? Doing great. How about you? Doing well, doing well. To my left, KVU 24's Corey Mose. Yeah. And across from me, twisting and tweaking the dials, Douglas Washington. The boys are back. Uh-oh. The boys are back in town. We're all together. Uh, Full crew, cl- cast of thousands on hand. All the interns are in today. <laughs> we appreciate you interns. <laughs> the research assistants are working hard. We appreciate them as always. Wow. Um, we got a good crew. We got a lot to talk. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. I mean, come on, come on now. Yeah. The best assembled sports crew in the ATX. Oh. Am I am I, hey. am I am I wrong? I mean, we double dipped with a Heisman winner, and we also had the first black quarterback to win the Super Bowl at both times. And at the end, they said that they had a lot of fun with That's us. That's right. I mean, come on. Exactly. Can't no one, else was, doing, can't no one else was doing that. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Hey, before we get started, what's up? So last weekend, yeah, um, the uh, KB24. Sports extravaganza. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, so I'm at, I'm at my favorite watering hole, uh-huh. enjoying Corey on TV. Hey, <laughs> aren't we all? That, that's like, we all start conversations with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm there with some friends of mine who, um, I mean, quite frankly, they, they know that we, I've got this show, but they're not listeners or anything. They're, you know, it's, know. They're, but, they're, but they, they're, they're, they're friends, they want to support. And I go, hey, he's one of my co-hosts. Uh-huh. And they go, the beautiful people, man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. I am one hundred percent serious. <laughs> you know, Corey, th- it's not that they said, "Hey, I forgot you had a show." They didn't care about that. They, right. they flew right through that <laughs> yeah. and went to you, Corey. Corey, I think you owe that man an apology. No, that's for sure, that's for sure. and I appreciate the support. Um, I, I think for sure, I didn't know when I first started doing that. Like, yeah. I had no idea it was going to become what it has become. Even like. Going back to Midland, yeah, mm-hmm. my days out there, like that became a real thing, mm-hmm. and I was nervous to do it here when I first got the job here. I thought, you know, oh yeah, yeah, I legit, like I thought, oh, that's a small market thing. I need to be more professional because I'm in a bigger market, yeah. and um, this is a new environment, a new uh, audience, and they're gonna hate it. You know, they're gonna think I'm corny, and uh, it I hits. took a leap of faith. <laughs> yeah, I took a leap of faith, and I was like, look, this is who I am. Yeah. So, whether they accept it or not, I'm at least going to try it. Yeah. Corey, you give hope to the rest of us. The rest of us, th- those that are majoring in broadcast and journalism, those that are in the media, those content creators, you, you let us know. This is, this, I'm going to make it sentimental here. Mm-hmm. You can tell I missed you. <laughs> uh, it, it's nice to know that you can be your authentic self and still get eyes. Mm. Because sometimes, to your point, you feel like, I got to walk this line. But things change. Yeah. Times change. And this is not your dad's microphone or TV. Walter Cron- Cronkite is not on KVU with you. Yeah. It's in a new era. So uh, for you to be able to do it your way, and well. uh, I hope you achieve Howard Cosell's status. <laughs> I appreciate I'm, that. I'm rooting for you. You know, that I, that's one thing I think we, we, as a people, I think we have to, you have to be happy for your friend. Yeah. yeah. Root for your brother like you root for yourself. Mm-hmm. There's plenty to go around. Yeah. Who's the guy that, that there's, he's, he's about, he's going to be a billionaire by 2029 and all he does is the demonstrative uh, shrug on oh. TikTok. He's got 162 mm-hmm. million followers. I'm sorry I don't know his name. And the gentleman, he, he worked in a factory. Wow. And he's not out here. He helps other people. He's not like, oh, no, I got to keep all this to myself. And he's being his authentic self. So full circle, proud of you, Corey. Well, I, yeah. And, and, and uh, look, and this is not just a Corey love fest. We, 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 do, love, <laughs> we, we, do, we do love Corey. And Corey does a great job. Heck at yeah, we do. And, and, I, and, and I, I, 
I encourage people to tune into KB24 and, and watch the sports. Um, it's not just Corey. I mean, Corey's our guy, but but uh, I think KB24 puts out a really good product all the way around. Um, but seeing you in here on Fridays reinforces what I see on the TV. That is you. That mm-hmm. smile. That smile that you have on TV is your smile. Um, yeah. and, and that is you that I'm watching on TV and not something you're trying to put on TV. Yeah. It's yeah. just you. So yeah. Yeah. I just want to... Hey, Corey, you know you're, you're my favorite KVU personality? And th- that's my I'm bar, 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 bar. about to say more than Quita. <laughs> I, I want that. Oh yeah, oh, no, I no, forgot. Yeah, yeah, I want to say more than Quita. Quita who? Jordan the Weatherman who? <laughs> I said it with my chest. <laughs> Corey, Corey. I'm Team Corey. I'm Team Corey. Yeah. Now, now none of them. Yeah, you can't disrespect the queen, man. Uh, you can't disrespect the saying, queen. Queen Quita. Everybody, everybody has their own taste. That's, that's true. That's like telling someone that they're top five greatest ball players of all time. You can't argue you someone can't. down about that. Yeah. That's who they like. Their opinion. Yeah. The, the young guys came up with the new era. Hey, if I'm going to tell you that Buddy Bell is my favorite third baseman of all time because he was a Ranger when I was growing up, <laughs> that's my favorite that's third baseman one. of all time. Yeah, that's I, great one. Yes, Brooke Robinson was better, but, okay. but Buddy Bell is my <laughs> guy. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know who that is. <laughs> what era is he talking about? But you brought me back with Brooks. I know yeah. Brooks. Yeah. Wow. But I just want to say, like, I appreciate the kind words. I really yeah. do. Because, yeah. you know, in this business, there's a lot of doubt. A lot of self doubt about if if this works and if this is going to work at a higher level, you know, and just getting to be able to experience the love here that I've experienced in Midland has gives me faith that as I continue to climb Mm -hmm. wherever I go, if I just continue doing what I do best and which is myself, then people are going to tune in, and I got to stop doubting myself because I've I've reached a top tier market mm-hmm. right yeah. and i have right. to acknowledge like yeah it works here yeah so why wouldn't it work on a network level can, can i do one little quick joke since we're giving them the love fest can, <laughs> can we do the joke fast can, sure. can, can yeah. we roast them quick yeah, yeah, yeah so i i i did a little homework i had some help but i did some homework i looked at midland midland material of mm. Corey. Mose. no way and uh oh my god he was he was at a bjj brazilian jiu-jitsu studio <laughs> and it, it looked like we had just come out of the COVID era maybe things were just we were all back outside he's in there on the mat sitting crisscross applesauce <laughs> oh <my laughs> no shoes on i don't you, no you, you were respectful of the dojo yeah sure. i gotta be and i was i think put me in a headlock but i think he was scared i think he was scared he didn't want to sneeze on anybody mm. <laughs> cough on anybody Body, I think he ran in and he ran out. <laughs> and, and that's a, and that's funny he brings up that story because now Corey, right? Yeah. I would have been trying to do something more interactive. I would have been trying to do yeah. a practice or a training session ah, yeah. with them. Mm-hmm. Back then, kind of nervous, yeah. you know, <laughs> right. kind of yeah. nervous to do that type of stuff. <laughs> but now with the added practice that I've had, you know, and getting out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, if you see my athlete of the week segments, like. I'm out there trying to that's, swing a bat, trying right. to swing a tennis racket, yep. yes. you know, trying to learn how to do these things from these athletes. And to me, it's fun. Yeah. And I wish I would have done it on a story like that, where it's like, man, I, w- I would have loved to get on the mat, you know, and try to learn a couple grips or or things like that or submissions. Um, yeah. But you know, you live and you learn. Yeah. yeah. You grow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that story, that's hilarious. Yeah. Bruno Bastos. <laughs> yeah. Bruno yeah. Bastos is his name. World champion. He, world champion. He interviewed yeah. a world yeah. champion Brazilian in the middle of West artists. Texas. Yeah. Like he had his own dojo. Like. Why are you here? <laughs> it's like, you guys remember those kung fu movies? Like, if you want to work on your art, you go out to some, this on the top of a mountain, there's a Shaolin temple. <laughs> well, it's Midland. <laughs> so you will be focused on your training out there with that guy. A world champion. What I would say, don't look up my first ever live shot. <laughs> now we're going to. Don't look that up. Now it's funny. It. it is funny. I will say that. Okay. It makes me chuckle. Okay. But, like, it's horrible. Okay. Now recording. I'm doing it. Now I'm going. <laughs> I don't know if it's anywhere. It, it is. Oh, yes. It's somewhere on the web. <laughs> we'll find oh, it. Oh, yeah. The internet is undefeated. That's right. That's right. 512-836-2887. We will open up the phone lines. We can get your calls and comments in. we got a lot to talk about. we got NFL preseason going on. We've yeah. got Major League Baseball has entered the final quarter of their season. Rangers fading. Astros. Hey, you know the vibes, baby. <laughs> you know the vibes, baby. <laughs> Two months ago, I was ready to sell the team. <laughs> That's right. Oh, George. man. And honestly, two weeks ago, yeah. and they made the trade. I'm like, you idiots. Mm-hmm. How are you going to trade Lopez Vito? 
Yep. And man, I hate that James Click knows what he's doing. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm rooting for one of our brothers here, uh, on air personality, Douglas Boone, mm. is from Baltimore. He's a big Orioles fan. I saw him earlier in the week. Travis? You would think it was the 1990s and it was a rap video. <laughs> <laughs> he had on the Orioles cap. Uh-huh. He had on the Orioles polo. <laughs> and then he had his khakis with a crease. Yeah. But <laughs> he was Orioles out. I thought he was going to do the Orioles hype video or something. Hey, <laughs> hey low-key, low last year during that playoff run, the Rangers win over the Orioles oh. in that series. Yeah. Was um, I mean, and, and and the Rangers took it to them, right? They they yeah, brought the bats. Yes. Yeah. I thought Baltimore was a, was the best team in the league last yeah. year. Yeah. And they have got it cooking. They've got five guys under like twenty six years I old. Young too. That are just killing it. That are going to be fun to watch. Yeah. If you want, yeah, we can take it. We can take it. But uh, so it, it was, yeah, Baltimore. If you're a Baltimore fan, this is the time to rep because you're in, you're in pretty good shape. You've got, you know, your football team is one of the most consistent teams, one of the best run teams in the league, and your baseball team right now is killing it. So for sure, for sure. We do have a call, so we're going to jump right in. Hey, Carl, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, go right ahead. Good day to all you guys. Good day to you as well. Thank you. Thank you for being there. I don't know if I'm a little staticky or not, so I won't stay too long. Uh, I'm on this toll road, so okay. <laughs> listening to you guys. And uh, I'm an old head, mm-hmm. you know. I say, I say, I say, don't patronize me. You guys say, don't gas me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you old, brother. You old. <laughs> um, but it's good to know the new lingual. It's good to see you. Uh, and nothing against any other culture, but it's good to see my culture bringing in uh, new, positive. And y'all are not coming from a place. See, back then we didn't. We we we, we were playing in the dirt. Then we'd go to the radio station and act like we were somebody. <laughs> you guys, you guys are literally going to school, being on TV. You're doing a lot of stuff. You guys are in the military. You're finishing things up. You're completing projects. And then you're getting on the radio. So it just I just want you guys to understand, too, how far you have evolved and what you guys have done. And let me tell you, on behalf of most of the citizens of the city of Austin, Austin, Texas, I've been here pretty much all my life, we appreciate y'all. Uh-huh. I think I can say that, and I can speak for us guys that went to high school in the 80s, put it that way. Well, thank you very much. Certainly right. appreciate that. And as a, as as a uh, uh, as a fellow person who went to the high school in the eighties, um, yeah, I'm I'm patronized too. I don't get gassed up about anything. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. A lot of love going around this morning. There is. There I is. love that. I love that. Thanks for calling. Started with you, Corey. I know, Lokito. Um, yeah. On that note, you know. It is crazy how the industry has changed. Sure. Right? And you have you, you mentioned Walter Cronkite. You know, oh, and my I, gosh. I think of a dude like Dale Hansen in Dallas. Uh-huh. Oh. And, you know, he's a legend in our business. But, man, he doesn't have to do half the crap i got to do every day. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being honest, Corey, bro. you tell me sometimes, for the listeners, I, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you you say, you say said things to me over this last year that I've known you. You said, yeah, so I'm out. I'm shooting video. I'm getting interviews. I'm, you're, and then sometimes you're going back and you're editing stuff. Yeah. I'm like, God. And then going on air. How many jobs you got, man? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I get paid for none of them. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. That's the so there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Just a I just lot. want to give that background and let people know it's not all shiny grins. No. Like you, you hustle yeah. for yours. It's crazy how, how many people think that people on TV like just go on TV yeah. and like say words. Right. It's like nah, bro. Every graphic you saw behind me in my monitors, I did that. Oh mm-hmm. man! Everything really? I said, I wrote that. Oh. All the video that you've watched, I shot that. Click, you click. know, and it's just like. Dale Hansen back in the day got paid triple the amount I'm getting paid. <laughs> and yeah. all he had to do was literally go on air. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. And yeah. so like it's frustrating at times, but I'm also blessed to know that I have so many different skills and people in this business have so many different skills now because we have to be so multifaceted. Yes, sir. But at the end of the day, yeah, I wish I was working back in the 90s <laughs> doing this thing. Bro. Right. Hey, I believe. Yeah. Uh, although I think now, what, what would we say? Mike Tirico. Yeah. I mean, what he just did with the Olympics... Mm-hmm. He might be on top yeah. right now because mm-hmm. NBC is just saying, "Hey, Mike, 
Go ahead and carry us. And they're yeah. coming. They just threw it on his back. They're and coming. I, th- I thought he did a great job, even yeah. over the years, to build to now. Uh, I, I, I was impressed because I know we're going to talk a little Olympics. So I was about to say with NBC, like them getting uh, basketball. Uh, yes. That's going to be a game changer. <laughs> and just getting a taste of uh, Ian Eagle. Yeah. Or is it Noah? Noah Eagle. Noah Eagle. Yeah. He's good. He's really good. <laughs> no. So, I, look, good. so I, 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 I talked to some friends about, about nepotism yeah. in, in TV. In TV, it's a thing. In all of TV, it's right? Nepotism in all of TV. Straight up. I mean, look, I, you know, um, Nick, uh, Jack Collinsworth. Mm-hmm. Yep. Congratulations to him. He has a nice job. He's I could do good. without him. He's not good. Um, Phil Sims' no, his son. Yeah, no, it's well, Chris Collinsworth's son. For, oh. For, oh, for Chris Sims. Yes. Yeah, Chris Sims. He, he's got yeah. a personality. Yeah, he's right. carved out a little place for himself. But yeah. um, straight up, no. I mean, obviously, we, we know Joe Buck. You know, I mean, yeah. his, his dad, Jack Buck, yes. is a legend, and Joe is filled in and, and done a fantastic job. Hey, I'll give you one more, and I'm not trying to be but, that guy, but, you know, Malika Andrews and her sister, oh, Kendra. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Malika's mm-hmm. a star, yeah. but, like, Kendra's, you know, she had a job at ESPN. You know, yeah. like, I wish I could have her job. Well, but, the, the... You're right, Noah does I a don't fantastic wanna, I'm gonna job. I'm going to misspell yeah, this. I agree. It's Nigerian. Please don't kill me. Uh, I know. The, in, 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 uh, the Mbouke sisters? Oh, Gumake. Gumake. Oh. Gumake. Yeah. I mean, H-Town. which one came first? Yeah, fact. <laughs> and th- drag the other one along. They're killing it. They're doing a great job. Some did uh, some some radio for ESPN. Yeah. They're doing TV. They're doing podcasts. People are bringing them onto their podcasts and different platforms. But again, there's I'm, one. There's one better than the other. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yes. Yeah. But like to going back to the point when they announced Noah Eagle. I was low-key pissed. Yeah. I was like, well, you're telling me this young cat who's my age mm-hmm. is going to commentate the Olympics after not really earning it, yeah. if we're being honest? Well, he was doing the Nickelodeon broadcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what are, what are we doing right now? And he's about to do the Olympics? But to his credit, he bought out. Oh, he, <laughs> he bought out, dude. He Agreed. took advantage of the opportunity. Oh, yep. so it's not over. I'm... I, I, I'm joking here, but I'm sure Carson Daly's son is your age, Jamal. <laughs> so the next, the next one is coming. Carson yeah. Daly's son is coming. Here's the thing. So I'm a little older than my wife, and we're looking at, <clears throat> sorry, the Today Show. I mean, we're talking a lot of NBC. So we're looking at the Today Show, and she's like, man, he's, I hate to say it, he's fat. That was, that was mm-hmm. her reply. But she remembers the pictures and stuff that I've seen her because she was a big Eminem fan. Gotcha. And remember one of his mm-hmm. things. Carson Daly bring me on. Yeah, we know that that line. And so she's comparing to the, what, 90s Carson Daly to the old guy, <laughs> possibly old enough to be Jamal's dad mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I was trying to tell her, well, he was the guy back then. Yeah. And he may not have had the skills. MTV just put him on. And then we just dealt with him. You know? <laughs> right. We don't know if he yeah. actually had the skills, but he he was the man. Mm-hmm. For sure, uh, for sure. We do need to talk some Olympics. Um, I'm oh, glad, yes. glad, but glad that turned uh, that direction because uh, mm-hmm. U.S. men and women in basketball did win their uh, uh, gold medals. Um, the women, a little more white knuckle yeah. than I think uh, a lot of people expected. Um, one of the things... That stood well. Obviously, one of the things stood about about out about that game. It was not a good basketball game. Mm. I mean, the shooting was atrocious. Uh, yeah, I'm I, I'm I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I, at some point, like at halftime, can can the coach say, "Hey guys, let's just go for layups. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pull up. Just just drive. Let's see what happens." Yeah. Uh, man, I, yeah. But um, it wasn't just me. Outside, of, outside of that, anything else? But you know, I'm going to give everybody a chance to kind of the the men's four by one relay. Oh, we don't, we don't, we don't uh, have Jamal, to talk. I mean, we can talk about it. If Jamal wants to uh, talk Jamal, about it. I know Jamal. Come on, Jamal. About it. Jamal, you got to get okay. it. Well, let me ask you something, Jamal. Since we're here, um, just from a track guy to a track guy. What's up? My dad, All American, Mississippi State. Good lord! Um, Good plug-in. Has a has a Papa has a Mose rec- is awesome. Has a record for the four by four at Mississippi State. Um, Can Papa Mose come on my podcast? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's retired. Seriously, he ain't got seriously, much to do. I would love. Seriously, <laughs> no, you don't mess up his tea time. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna keep bugging you. No, I'm being dead serious. I, I've, I've always, I've always been. Uh, haven't I always said Papa yeah, Mose? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I've always been impressed with Papa yeah. Mose. I'd love yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he definitely has records at Mississippi State. Good lord. Um, but his passion is coaching. Right, mm-hmm. and in summer track, yeah. 
he was coaching the sprinters mm -hmm. and man the time that they put into their four by one now mind you my dad's coached a lot of four by ones that have made it to the junior olympics and has mm -hmm. won at the junior olympics wait is that what you ran the four by one no i wish i did i oh. wish i was a sprinter yeah. okay. oh my goodness i ran the 800 to 15 oh, okay. steeplechase okay. Just, well, while, while the sprinters are doing block starts i'm running six miles uh, <laughs> yeah, <brother. laughs> oh i hated God. the sprinters I'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> um but anyways the hours they would spend mm -hmm. just jogging around the track saying stick yep. mm -hmm. yes. and practicing. Yep. I saw it with my own eyes. And I'm thinking, how does the best of the best can't get a stick around the track I mean, for decades? You tell, yeah. you tell me, for every, decades. every one of these sprinters... <laughs> Since the time they were, and I'm, I, they probably all ran some sort of AAU track or something like yeah, that too. Yeah. But from the time they hit their freshman, year, the, from the time they hit middle school track, mm -hmm. every one of them had been the fastest guy in their school, yeah. and every one of them had been running relays. Yes, yeah. it's not new to them. Mm -hmm. All the way through high school, all the way through college. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're and they're this bad at it, Jamal. Yeah. And, well, I mean, well, let me ask the question. Though, I didn't really get the oh, question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So Sorry. the question to me would be. For that particular instance, with Noah being out, yeah. and I get it, you know, he had COVID, which yeah. you, you know, he was in the clubs afterwards. Yeah. Um, Thank you. <laughs> you take <laughs> Noah out the anchor, yeah. why <coughs> switch all the legs and not just replace the anchor, but instead switch everybody around? Is that not a dumb move to you? Uh, well, in fighting. So, because everyone wanted it. Drew, I yeah. think. Christian. Christian Coleman, you have to keep him at first leg. His yes. block start yeah. is insane. Yeah. Um, now that second leg um, is known to be as the farthest. Mm -hmm. leg. Should be the fastest. Person. It should be the fastest person there. Um, you know, I was actually fine with them putting Kenny on it, but to kind of backtrack a little bit, you talked about it and said the hours that they put in. Yeah. Um, to the relay. Teams like Japan, there's reason in yeah. China and Italy, there's a reason their handoffs are flawless. Right. What they put so much time into it. And Team USA, they just really don't do it until they figure out um who is the team, who's, who's the, the team, team after trials, you know? Yeah. yeah. So but um as far as switching up the lineup, really I think the lineup was fine. It was just like they don't put the time, they don't build the chemistry, yeah. uh, good enough chemistry enough to get it around. But and Ken, Kenny oh, made a mistake. He, he left did. early. He left, he he left, left early. way early. And, and he's got to It was obvious. That. The moment yeah. he took off, like, he he's not getting the stick. I yeah. like he posted on social media after, and he, he didn't necessarily address it to say, my bad. Of course not. But he did say, <laughs> my bad, without saying totally my bad. Yeah. And then the rest of us just have to, we all ran track. Mm -hmm. you, you know, bro, you left early. And, yeah. and Christian couldn't catch you. Like, it, Christian couldn't yeah. get there. He's a shorter no man Here, that, that was ugly here's the funny thing to me literally after a bad race they all as they're walking back to the stands lewis johnson is right there <laughs> ready to interview them and asking them you know obvious questions uh -huh. so you want to tell me what happened right here yeah. and, and like they were all just there like we don't want to talk to not you right now man. not trying to and and that's why i would say why change can you talk about the chemistry not yeah. having the chemistry mm -hmm. Those other legs already had chemistry. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I say why change the legs that's, yeah. when you've already put in the I time, the short amount of time that you had, exactly. you already put in the time between the, the legs one to two, two to three. Keep that the same then. That's, I think that's, that's, that's my point as well mm -hmm. is keep, keep those exchanges as close to the same as you can. Only change the ones you have to change. Yeah. The, the other thing is, is that I 100% get that these guys – once they get out of college, mm -hmm. it's not a part of their daily routine anymore. So it's I, I understand that. Right. And, 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 and to your point, other countries have a different way that they run their Olympic teams, and the U.S. is never going to be like that. And I get it. That that's that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. But but we but we you need to find some consistency mm -hmm. with some number of people on a regular basis. Yeah. So I, I, I what I want to say to that though is gentlemen, tell me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. We're the USA. We're prima donnas. Now I'm looking at the medal count. We were number one in gold, number one in silver, number one in bronze. Right. Sixty-five percent of that so, count for the ladies, by the way. Let's look yeah. in this room right now. And I, I just, I would love to tell you all this. I just got beat in a one-lap race by my daughter the other day, so she's now the fastest Washington. <laughs> That's so in this room, I'm gonna look at you two and say, just guessing, you two are the fastest people in here. 
Mm. So you're the fastest in the entire station, but we're going to race another station. Let's just, just bear with me now. Mm. If you know that you're one of the fastest in the nation, shouldn't you still, instead of work, you're working on your starts, you're working on all the other things, you know at some point in the world championships and the Olympics, you're going to have to take that stick. Yeah. So you should have it in your routine instead of just focusing on me, 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 mm. and my stuff. That, I'm just asking. But track of the individual sport. Yeah, at the end of the day, like none of these guys train with each other they don't and i think that's what's helped out the women mm -hmm. is that the top 300 meter runners they train together. all train, train together women. and so they've had the time to kind of practice if they do mm -hmm. i doubt they do i doubt they do but it's I just bet the they fact do of some, being though. with yeah. each other the and having a relationship is important i guarantee, i guarantee you the closer they got to the olympic trials those people that trained together they mm -hmm. certainly did that yeah. that's for sure so we're going to get to a break get back at, here after these words Washington twisting and tweaking the dials, keeping us on air, and a caller on the line, and I bet they hail from Pflugerville. <laughs> Is it the Pflugerville man? <laughs> Hello, good morning. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Pflugerville man. All right, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit this Friday morning about uh, our Dallas Cowboys. I don't, we were just thinking that in the neighborhood say. Dallas had a real deal with all the authority that he had. Would we have won more playoff games? Or uh, maybe we would have made it to the championship game? Or uh, maybe we would have made it to the Super Bowl? <coughs> no one would ever know. What we do know is, and how Rick Jerry said, he's going to be the general manager. But you got to stop and say, Jerry did a good job of taking the Cowboys, making them into a, the team that they are, it's known worldwide. He took that money, but he what he one off the Cowboys have got pizza places, burgers, cars, and everything. So you say, how about Bart in the game? So I would say about Bart in the game, but I wanted to go to the new stadium, so that won't work. Then how about the merchandise, buying, uh, buying t-shirts and stuff? What I like to do is I go to the game, buy me a big two things. So what I want to say to y'all is the Dallas Cowboys are uh, bougie people. I, I lost that that I didn't get the 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 back end of that. Is the, are the Dallas Cowboys? What was that last part? Are the Dallas Cowboys a bougie team? Oh, mm. you say bootleg? <laughs> bougie, bougie, bougie. Oh, bougie, yeah, <laughs> bougie. Um, bougie. yes, and they have to be. Yeah. Well, they're cheap too. I think they're a cheap team. Yeah. Um. I I, I think when it comes to their players, they're cheap, for sure. Um, when it comes to everything else, no. Nah. Like, they, they want the theatrics. They want to be the best Cowboys cheerleaders. You know what I'm saying? They put so much time and effort into that. They put so much time and effort to the stadium mm -hmm. um, because Jerry knows that's all going to make money. Think about the Cowboys cheerleaders. Like, they just had this Netflix show. You know how yep. much money they made off of that? Yeah. About the stadium. When they built the new arena, like, he's made so much profit. After I'm sure it cost him a lot to build it, but – since then, I mean, I'm sure he's in the profit by now. What do you think? Oh, sure. Yeah. For sure, yeah. <laughs> and so it's like... I mean, he gets $75 for parking. Exactly. <laughs> and so, Ooh. yeah, they're bougie in everything outside of paying players, you know? Travis, they're doing this. They're drawing out these contracts to stay in the news, mm -hmm. I allege. Because, Travis, a good businessman knows get in where you fit in or you get left out. And then you got to buy them out. I, I made that up. It, you, you sign your, your top receivers now or you got to pay later. Because if you don't sign CD now, who, who else is up? We got Jamar Chase. Mm -hmm. still has, has to get paid. Uh, there's somebody else. Uh, uh, I, it, it eludes me right now. There's a couple more receivers ahead of that year group that have to be paid. Mm -hmm. And if you wait, now you got to pay on top of those guys mm -hmm. and so just sign cd now we don't know what cd's asking for we're, right. we're not privy to that information but i don't think from what i can see cd is not he's not irrational so pay him mm -hmm. maybe set the market and then well, well we know what tyreek hill got last year yeah and lot. and Jalen waddle waddle is is in a good place so it, it, i think it's going to be okay i it, but Jerry doesn't want to pay because we keep talking about him. Do, do you think that, or am I a conspiracy theorist? No, no, I, I, I tend to agree with you. I tend to, to believe, there's, I, 
I believe two things, okay. and, and I, I'm, I don't believe they're exclusive of each other. I believe that they, hap they just happen to go hand in hand. Yeah. They're bad at football business, <laughs> and being bad at football business <laughs> keeps them in the limelight all the time, and people can get talked about all the time, and it just happens to play into their hands the way they want to be in the limelight, and because they're so bad at the business of football, they keep themselves in the limelight because of that. And I don't think, I don't believe that they do it intentionally. I just think that they are behind the curve on the way other franchises are doing things. And point, uh, point being, and I, it's, I can't remember who it was that uh, they announced the deal here in the past couple of weeks, who's after year three of his rookie deal, and they've already come to an agreement on his next deal. Mm. And so that way they can spread the bonus money yes. over these next two years of his original contract, and it makes his effective amounts cheaper over the long run of his next deal, and there's no way that Stephen Jones is smart enough to figure that out. <laughs> I, I, I got the names. I got the names. Fugaroo, man, tell me if you want to, if you want, you want to talk Cowboys, we're going to give you some Cowboys. Tell me if CD is better than Brandon Ayuk, <clears throat> Chris Godwin. Those are, those are just two guys right there, and I did tell you about Jamar Chase earlier. Fugaroo, man, what, which, which is the best wide receiver out of those group and deserves the most money? Well, C.D. Lamb, of course. Okay. Now, that sounds like a Cowboys fan giving that answer. <laughs> because Jamar Chase, <coughs> Jamar Chase can go. is from another planet. And Brandon Ayuk, I mean, he's not a slouch. If Debo Sam wasn't there, I think we'd be, we'd be carrying Brandon Ayuk on oh, our I shoulders. Yeah, Just it's, That's such a loaded team. But, but, but Fluru, man, any of your answers would have been the right answer. But I expected you to kind of go to CD. And I, I was hoping okay. Travis would be like, well, CD. But that's what I mean. If you if just pay him now, but I don't think Chris Godwin necessarily is in that. Oh, definitely. But but, but again, it, maybe if Mike Evans wasn't there, maybe Chris Godwin would have got more, and we would have realized he's better. It just pay the guy now, so we can move on and and talk about the contract for Dak. Yeah. But, but you don't want to have to. This is double the drama. We're already embarrassed about your running back core. Although I think Rico Dattle. Whoa. Put this down. I think Rico is gonna by the end of the year. I think we're gonna be like, okay, Rico, yeah. you're the guy. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Rico is gonna be the guy. But and I don't just pay. I guy. actually kind of agree with you, Douglas, in the sense of Jerry's, Jerry's smart when it comes to media. Yeah. And so, yeah, maybe he is dragging this out. <laughs> so we, could, I mean, we've been talking about the Cowboys contract since the beginning of the summer, and we're sucks. today on August. 16th. Yeah. We are still talking about <laughs> Cowboys contracts. <laughs> so, um, I so I, I, I want to go back real quick to something you said earlier. You mentioned Dale Hansen earlier. Yeah. One of Dale Hansen's mantras was Cowboys every night. Mm. Mm. He did a he had a Cowboys story every night he was on the air. Yeah. Good um, business. And who made it easier for him to get a story out than Jerry Jones? <laughs> yeah. 100%. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, he knows what he's doing. Flugerville man. I, I want to yes. just say this to you. If Jerry drags this out for C.D. Lamb, ultimately signs him last after T. Higgins. <laughs> Another guy. I mean, mm -hmm. what are we talking about here? Um, it, it, um, the guy that was in San Diego, uh, Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if he drags it out, he can then brag in the back end. We got the highest paid wide receiver in the game. And then again, there's more mm -hmm. eyes on, on Dallas. So, hey, Fluber man. You won a Cowboys, we gave it to you. What else you got, Mr. Flugel Man? Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, I know one player that everybody knows that might not be on the Dallas Cowboys next year. That's Dak Prescott. If that no trade and no tag, I yeah. think he's going to walk and get one of them $100 million contracts. He, well, he, girls, girls, <laughs> let me get back. I got to get back. My, my money is getting the side out. What's your calculator? Brother. Thank you, Flugerville, man. We appreciate you as always. 512-836-2887. Flugerville, man, is gangster. Mm. Did, did you hear what he just said? He said, he said my, my manager. He's right? looking at me side-eyed. So he's like, hey, hold on. I want to call into a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, get, I'll get back to you. I mean, that's... No, thanks, though. It's pretty, pretty tough. <laughs> it, so did he just say that Dak is going to walk? He thinks, and then yeah. someone else yeah. is going to go give him $100 million? Las Vegas. Sure. Facts. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Las Vegas. We talked about it. Yeah. 
uh, to me it makes sense it. like it makes sense mm-hmm. like if you go out and there's been rumors with Devontae Adams and the reason why Vegas hadn't traded Devontae is that they're waiting on the Cowboys to make mm-hmm. a decision because in their mind it's like well we have a top tier receiver yeah. so we just need a quarterback and if this whole Dak situation falls through, we mm-hmm. would pay Dak whatever he wants. As I as I said, and I'm not a Cowboys fan. I know where I live. I know who I'm on the panel with. I, I, I love Travis. I was going to say like. I love you, Travis. And I, <laughs> I, I like how passionate you are for the teams you root for. That's the perfect building block in Vegas. I will take, as a, I'm not a Raiders fan, but as a Raiders fan, I'll take Dak Prescott sure and then put is. a bunch of talent around him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Cowboy fans. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all need to go storm the castle. Yeah, and so I, yeah, I don't know. Like I've been so infatuated with how Jerry's going to handle the situation, and he hadn't handled anything yet. No. Um, and like I said, it's been months. Yeah. So now the price is getting higher and higher and higher. I'll give you my opinion later on, but I think two of the three are going to sign, and uh, I think you're going to be surprised at which one I think's gone. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. I know Mike is not leaving. Whoa. So. Well, this. Why don't you, why don't you hold on? Uh, chill out, bro. <laughs> Unless he comes to Houston, you know what I'm saying? With, with, his, with his best friend. <laughs> hey, we got a caller on the line. Caller, you there? Yes, sir, I am. Mr. Sorry. Oklahoma, how you doing this morning? Hey, what's going on? You all right? Doing well, doing well. Yeah, I want to talk about that Olympic track and field, man. The only one messed up on that about one was Kung Fu Jenny <laughs> on the second leg. He, he, was the only, he was the only one messed up. He took out way too early, man. No yeah. doubt. No doubt. Caught that adrenaline rush and took off. Yeah, he took off. But what it is, they don't practice a lot together, you know. They don't. They don't. So, I mean, that's been happening a lot with that one by, with that uh, four by one. Yeah, for decades. Because when I ran track, I ran second leg, too. I waited for my man, you know. But you have these other guys on the side of you. They already got their batons taken off. And that kind of, I'm just distract you a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Kung Fu Kid is the one messed up the whole relay team. <laughs> Literally. Uh, it's like you have to put blinders in your eyes. Yeah, um, yeah. You got to do something. You just have to wait, man. You have to wait. You know, brothers, I want to ask you, you don't have a, a NFL team. Who is your favorite college team, sir? So I do not disclose my favorite teams uh, just yeah. to have an air of mystery, but it also allows me that, that universality. Look, I, bar- I barely can claim a city that I'm from. <laughs> because That's I'm right, he's been everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and it allows me to just come over. And, and I, I do enjoy it that way. I hope it doesn't frustrate. I think it frustrates Travis. <laughs> but he actually knows who. I, think he know, I know he knows my NFL team. I don't really talk about the, the college team that much. But, no, I... I I, I just well, I just want to be the fan. I want to be the fan. I can't I I cannot into these airways, sir. Right? <laughs> well, <laughs> but, but you know what? You know what? You know it? what, man? You played football and all that. I did. And you can disclose your favorite NFL or college team. I can, I can disclose favorite players. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. that's, that's I mean to tell you that's I love it. But no, I, I just feel like no one wants to talk about me. That, that that's that's just look, that could be wrong. I did not get a degree in broadcast journalism. I'm a business major <laughs> and that that's just my way. I could be handling this wrong. I could be doing it wrong. But I just feel like I don't want to I don't want to come on here and be a homer. So I just felt like I need to just take it out. It, it's just how I feel. I, it, that yeah. Again, I mean, and, I mean, and you know, I, I I did live in Houston for a little while, but you know, I'm not from Texas, and the last thing y'all want me coming up in here is talking about anything but Texas. Mm-hmm. So I want to put myself into what you guys want to talk to, and I'm telling you, in my yeah. life, I have never talked this much Cowboys in my <laughs> life since I've been on this show, and I yeah, because you're not you you're not a Cowboy fan. No, I can tell. No, that. no, no, no. <laughs> I, no, and I've said that. I I think I always lead with that. I always say, look, I'm not a Cowboys fan, <laughs> but I love me some that. <laughs> or I love, you know, I love whatever we're talking about. I, it, I haven't even given a, 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 a uh, like last year, I, wow, last year, remember, I was like, it was NFC Championship or bust for the Cowboys. I got in early, mm-hmm. and now I got in early on Rico. I didn't even give you guys any other players I'm looking yeah. at. There's a couple other guys I want to look at. Uh, yeah. For, uh, for real. Uh, Mr. Oklahoma, I'm just very curious here. 
When we start this NFL season, I want to know what is the team we all need to get on the bandwagon for. I want you to put it out there before. Who are you watching? Where's the bandwagon? I want to jump on it. Well, you know, I'm, I'm definitely watching the Cowboys and the Houston Texans. Okay. I'm watching both of those, especially, especially the Texans. All right. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, the Cowboys, I, I mean, that's my team. I'm always going to be a Cowboy fan. But they're not going to the Super Bowl, man. They got too much friction, you know, in they in they camp. They got too much friction. I I will tell you. And I'm and I'm and I'm thinking that you know since Dallas got hurt, you know, that that bad injury, I, I think like he might have lost a little bit. But it's not all. It's not only that. Mm-hmm. It's not only that. It's a, you know it's a lot of players, defense and offense. Oh, they're going to the Super Bowl. JJ McCarthy is out. So it's it's it's, yeah, it's yeah. smooth sailing from yeah. here in, in in the NFC East. So <laughs> pencil them in. <laughs> Do it, man, because you know you know JJ McCarthy, man. He you know I mean the coach for the Cowboys, man. He won at one Super Bowl, and he haven't done nothing since with the Cowboys. Oh oh, you went to Mike. 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 You went to Mike. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I was making a joke yeah, about the starting, yeah, the, the rookie starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, the one that just won a national championship for Michigan, J.J. McCarthy. So I was making that yeah, joke because yeah. he's I mean, out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Oklahoma, what else? I, I know you uh, you looked at other things in the Olympics. You, you hit us with the track. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you, man, to me, that was one of the best Olympics that I have ever seen. Mm-hmm. Even, even the closing ceremonies, man, that was just it was so much stuff. It was so nice and neat, man. You know what I'm saying? I said, God, it's a lot of stuff I've never seen before. You know, at the Olympics like that, you know. But that was one of the best Olympics, best of basketball. I thought, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I agree. agree. I agree. Yeah. I thought it was really good. I thought it was a really good Olympics. Um, I thought, yeah. I, I, I want to thank all the creators of media platforms mm-hmm. because I thought NBC was able to do a really good job of providing content. Absolutely. Um, streaming services have made it available so that if you want to watch something live, you can watch it live. Um, if you just yeah. want to watch, if you just want to turn into the network on uh, every weeknight and watch what they yeah. provide you, you can still just do that the way we did it old school back in the 80s when we still watched it on Rabbit Ears. Um, you, you, it, it, I thought it was, um, I think media has made it so much more enjoyable mm-hmm. um, to, to watch. I thought, I, I, you know, I thought it was kind of weird when I first heard about it, but uh, did anybody else do the um, AI Al Michaels Providing you the daily wrap no, up, you could go in and put your preferences of sports in, and they had AI Al Michaels would give you a daily update on the sports that you wanted, um, uh, and and just kind of and you could just listen to him talk about. It. I mean, it was. It, I thought did I thought you did a really good job. I should try it. It was okay. pretty cool. Yeah, that, I couldn't support it. I'm not gonna lie to you. Just for the I future know. of no, sports. I, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you said that. Uh, so I coach a few sports right now. I'm coaching uh, 10U girls softball. Mm-hmm. And uh, first game's coming up next week. Looking forward to it. We, we won our first scrimmage on <clears throat> Wednesday. Yeah, we're, we're off to the races. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen, we do walk-up mm-hmm. songs for the young ladies. Mm-hmm. You can use Pat Summerall and John Madden to voice their, the AI. We yes. can mm-hmm. voice their walk-up. Right. Coming yeah. in, Travis Kent, the pride of Dallas, Texas yeah. area. Sorry, yeah. I forgot your town. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's great. And you would think it's there. Whatever your nickname yeah. is, they'll, in, uh, they'll say that. Uh, I'm okay with the AI. I didn't do it, but I, I I enjoy it. Yeah. And the kids know nothing. They don't know who. Jo- they, they don't play Madden. They don't know who Madden or Summerall is. But they love the they love the AI voice mm-hmm. that they get. So yeah, there's I'm a, a fan. That's yeah. crazy. Hey, Mr. Oklahoma, you got yeah, anything I, else? Hey, and I want to I want to say that uh, what I remember my my Midland is that football teams in the seventies, man. They yeah. stayed at school. <laughs> Yeah, that's a they say that mm-hmm. they stayed in the seventies, man. No joke. No no I say, golly, man. Men and Lee had a run too. Men and Lee had it. Yeah, that's right. Benson. They sure did. And Eric Winston on that team, mm-hmm. former Texan. Yep. Mm-hmm. Did y'all make fun of those boys back back when you were young? Did, Who? Were, were there Midland oh. jokes, Travis, about 
what, something out in the water. No. Those country boys. <laughs> no, it, it, so. I mean Mojo was a real Mojo was real back then. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and it was yeah. um, the everybody uh, everybody on the eastern part of the state. Yeah, we were waiting. All of us at smaller schools, we were waiting for the Dallas schools to run into okay. Midland yeah. Odessa. I mean Midland Lee and Odessa Permian and those yeah. teams because uh-huh. we knew they were legit, uh-huh. and it was going to be interesting to see. And and the whether it was Dallas Carter. Or whether it was uh, one of the yeah. Houston schools, um, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Yates, yeah, exactly. We were waiting Yates. for that collision between the East and the West to oh. hit because we knew it was coming. Okay, they were for real. Uh-huh. I mean, if you if you remember, uh, the, yeah, uh, go ahead, Mister O'Connor. I, I want to say one more thing before I get off that man. But probably they gonna have. I heard they gonna have baseball the next Olympics. They are. It would mm-hmm. it would be back baseball and softball, and you know. Um, softball, the site will be Oklahoma City for uh, really? the softball. They uh, they have uh, chosen um, what is what essentially is the home of softball in the U.S. Oklahoma City will be where the wow. softball will be held at the next Olympics for L.A. Oh man! Yeah. Yep. So. And this guy, hey, this guy is football for the crank up, man. I'm waiting, man. Oh, I'm yeah. ready. We're just a couple weeks away. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Oklahoma. We appreciate you. You know, a lot of a lot of people don't remember um, the Friday Night Lights book, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. which was about um, um, Odessa, about Permian. They hated that book, by uh, the way. Yeah, yeah, and um, <laughs> and, and I know people hate that book out there, dude. Out in where you're from? In, in Midland. Oh, out there. They hate that book. Wow, <laughs> oh, I didn't because, know. Because because if you read the and I, I read it before I started out there, just to get, you know, I saw the movie growing yeah. up, but yeah. like people told me you need to read the book t- before you really start. Um, mm-hmm. And once I read the book, I realized why I needed to read the book mm. because it's nothing like the movie. Uh. Right. Like, it is very real, mm-hmm. it is very truthful. Um, and people don't like the truth when the truth is kind of dark. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah. a lot of scandals going on in West Texas back in that day, a lot of money getting tossed around for different players and stuff like that. Um, but that's the truth, right? <laughs> well, mm-hmm. and so, that, that was, you know, that's part. Part of the storyline, of course, Permian meets Dallas Carter in the state semifinals. Yeah, not you watch, the state if you watch the movie, it's the state yeah. championship, but they met him in the state semifinals. Of course, that Dallas Carter team um, it, it was uh, f- riddled with um, weirdness. Uh, four, pl- <laughs> four players committed armed robbery during that season. Yeah. What? Um, uh, of course, that had uh, Jesse Armstead, who went, went on to play in Miami, Miami. as part of that, mm-hmm. who signed his letter of intent in a hot tub. Um, sure. I mean, it was. <laughs> they had nine players go Division One off of that Dallas yeah, Carter that team. team was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Mm. Sheesh. And it wasn't that close, right? No, it wasn't that close. As in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It was so. It was. It was something else. So the sure. movie. They love the movie out there. Oh, okay. Yeah, they. You know, that's a fictional. Movie. That's a fictional tale. Yeah. <laughs> the book. They love the movie. Yeah. The, it the makes book. them look good. Yeah. Everyone talk about Booby Miles. You know? That's right. He yeah. can run and <laughs> he can pass. <laughs> <laughs> like, they love the movie, but like if you t- if you talk about the book and which the funny thing is, they let the author mm-hmm. walk around with the coaches, be have all the access in the locker rooms. Like if you didn't want this to get out, mm-hmm. why did you give the author all this access? Yeah. You know, he's gonna write about it. It's his job, and so they just expected him to write like a fluff piece. Mm-hmm. in a fluff book about how great West Texas is. But he's like, no, nah, what I saw with my own eyes was that y'all are doing things under the table. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm going to write about it, you know? Does so. anybody know? I see. I know now Mike Winchell, the, cor- the heroic quarterback, yeah. works for an old field services company outside of Denton, according to Collider.com. But yeah, d- d- did he get any looks? Did he go to a college program? Did he That's do anything? Question. Oh, okay, I was just kind of curious because I, I, okay, so we know the Dallas Carter team and how many people they got, yeah. but I was just kind of curious in that Permian team, just like what some of those guys went on. I to mean, at the, at the end of the movie, it has those um, those messages yeah. that Did everybody it? knows. And okay, like, I, I know Booby's been in and out of jail. Yeah, he's, yeah. Had, a rough, yeah. he's, he's yeah. had a rough. He's had a rough. I've he's, seen Booby in person. I met him. Oh. Um, he's, he's in a out, wheelchair. He was out that way. Still in. Yeah, he's still out there. Yeah, he's, Odessa, his knee was tore up. Yeah, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. Like he can't. He can't walk. Um, but yeah, he's been in and out of jail though. Like 
like I said, the movie makes him look very good, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that just wasn't the case um, at all out there. What so, was it? Y'all want to win? Let Booby go in and spin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, Midland, on the other hand, like that run that they had in the early what, early two thousands or late nineties with Cedric. Um, was that it was uh, um, early two thousands? Uh, uh, yeah, the early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that team was stacked. <coughs> They had they have NFL pros all over mm-hmm. the place wow. on that Midland League team. Did you say um, Cedric as in Cedric Benson? Yeah. yeah. Mm. What? That's yeah. where he's from. Midland League. Yeah. Yep. Did not know that. Really? I ain't from Texas. I, that's fair. That's but fair. I, I know where he played. Yeah. <laughs> I know about him. Bro, but his I didn't high know school he came clips from there. Like, you know, we had we oh. have all this footage from back in the day. No thanks. Mm-hmm. I ain't um, tackling that. Bro, I'm like high schoolers. I could imagine. To, bro, I mean, multiple 300 yard games. He yes. had those thighs mm-hmm. then too. Yeah, he was thick. No, thanks. Yes. Yeah, he, he was good. a freak. Hey, coach, mm. you want me to? I mean, the reason why he went to Texas. <laughs> I'm going to warm up the punter over there. Yeah. <laughs> don't put me in. I mean, hey, I don't know when the last West Texas running back went to Texas. I mean, I think he may have been the last yeah, one. Probably so. Um, wow. Like, that's how good he was. That Texas went all the way out there to go get him. Now, of course, they've had Roy Williams. Roy Williams, he was there. a Permian kid. Yeah, oh. from Permian. Um, but running backs, I think he was the last one okay. from my memory um, because he was that good, man. And like I said, I, I watched the old clips in our archives. And to be an 18, 17 year old trying to tackle that freight train, yeah. I mm-hmm. wouldn't want to tackle him either. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Okay. <laughs> For the, the ones of us who actually played that high school ball, I didn't play until I was a grown man and had been lifting for years in the Army. Uh, Travis, mm-hmm. uh, there's some business decisions sometimes when it comes oh, yeah. to that stuff, right? Yeah. So, so you can kind of like y- 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 your shoulder tackle, you don't fully commit to it, right? But you, you give it a good effort, like you, you kind of shoulder graze, but ah, oh, but I didn't get them. Or, or, or do you, you got to take one for the team. Oh, I took one for the team. I took one for the team. Oh my God. I knew I, I knew I had no business in the future, so I I, I never <laughs> played after high school, so I left it all on the field in high school. I, t- I tell everybody all the time, the, the hardest I ever got hit was by my, one of my own teammates. I was running scout team quarterback yeah. and uh, went for Tubbs who played at UT and played for the 49ers and the Saints uh, in the mm-hmm. NFL, I come around the corner on an option, mm-hmm. and he hits me underneath the face mask and pops my head up, Ooh. and his face mask drills straight into my neck, and, I mean, he just plants me in the ground. <sighs> and I was, the only, I was the only one running scout team quarterback that day, so I had to get up and run the next play. Oh, my oh God. My <laughs> hey, which way do I – hey, guys – Pick me up. Tell me which way we're going. Which sideline am I going to? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, um, hey, um, we need, you, you want, you know, I was going to say, speaking of, the, like, he mentioned the closing ceremony. Did you, what y'all think of Tom Cruise, man? Oh, oh, I he, he hey. didn't seem like he that was that's what he wanted to do. <laughs> 20 I liked it. I, I liked feel it like, well, I feel like he wanted to do something more like on edge. Yeah. I, I think you saw that like rope or, or whatever on his leg or yeah. his foot mm-hmm. or whatever trying to make sure he doesn't die. Yeah. I think he wanted to risk it. <laughs> UKAZI 88.7 Travis Kent to my right Jamal January to my left KB24's Corey Mose across the room Douglas Washington twisting and tweaking the dials keeping us on course. Let's do it. And we got Ms. Marla peeking in going, what are you crazy fools doing in here while we're off the air? <laughs> I think she was listening in to the show, and she wants to come in and get autographs. I think, she, I think. I I think she I thought think. I think she thought we thought we were on the air <laughs> during the off the air conversation. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. uh, no, we, 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 we got it under control, Ms. Marla. Thank you, though, for checking on us. So, uh, um, I we wanted to get to a little bit of UT football talk. We obviously got we got NFL training camps. We're going to talk NFL training camps as well. Mm-hmm. Um, UT camp is open up, and we're closer to the beginning of college football season. So let's talk a little bit of UT football, a little bit of college sports before we get to our NFL talk. Sound good to me? Mm-hmm. Um, so, Corey, I, I'll kind of direct this your way because uh, you're a little bit closer from the media side to things, but. Uh, Tough week and a half or so for the running back room yeah. um, at UT. Yeah, Christian Clark, freshman from Phoenix, who honestly, Sarkeesian has compared to Bijan Robinson um, in the past. In, in the sense of, he said on record, like, when he first saw Christian Clark play, he wrote down in his notes, Bijan. 
Okay. That was a, one of the first things he wrote down. Now, mind you, of course, you have the tie with Arizona. Mm-hmm. Um, he's around this. He's from the same area as Bijan, so like that's also a playing a factor. But at the end of the day, he still wrote down Bijan <laughs> when mm-hmm. he saw Christian Clark play. He tore his Achilles this past week, I believe, on Tuesday, and then on top of that. Two weeks ago, or about a week and a half ago, C.J. Baxter tore his PCL and his LCL. Um, And so they're both out for the season in that running back room. Of course, C.J. Baxter was going to be the starter. Mm -hmm. Um, And then once he went down, Christian Clark was going to be one of the guys to step up. They have another freshman in Jared Gibson who looks like a pretty solid running back um, that we're expected to do more. But now you lose another piece, another depth piece in Christian mm-hmm. Clark. And so now you're just kind of left with Jaden Blue, mm-hmm. um, who is already on the Doak Walker uh-huh. watch list. So, yeah. you know, him and Baxter are on that list. Uh-huh. And so you expect him to get a bulk, a bulk of the carries now and won't be a split. But, you know, you got to trust in a freshman in Jared Gibson. you got to trust in a sophomore in Trey Wisner from DeSoto. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've yeah. also moved some people to that running back room recently. Um, and Ryan Niblett, who is a wide receiver with a lot of speed, and also Juan Davis, who's a tight end. Now, Juan Davis doesn't make sense except for pass blocking, in my opinion. Right. Uh, C.J. Baxter was the best pass blocking running back in that room. You lose him. Jaden Blue's undersized when it comes to blocking. And so maybe that's why they're moving Juan Davis to the running back room so he can come in for pass protection. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. So when, you know, I, I, I talk about him a lot. I mentioned him earlier. Went for Tubbs. I went to high school with him. We graduated together. He came to UT. Um, and uh, our freshman year here, um, Layton, Adrian Walker was the, the running back um, for, for Texas that year. Adrian, um, I think he still works. He's up in the Dallas area working for an insurance company. I ran into him probably a, about a decade ago at a golf tournament one time. Really nice guy. Um, was a really good college running back. Um, late in the season, Adrian got deemed up. So they had moved. Tubbs was a linebacker. <clears throat> was always going to play the linebacker at UT. Uh, but the depth chart was stacked his freshman year. Mm-hmm. And so they moved him to fullback because he had played uh, wishbone fullback uh, for our high school in, in the in the wishbone formation. And so he probably played, I don't know, 25, 30 snaps a game at the fullback in a standard eye formation in front of Adrian. Um, well, we get to late in the season, Adrian gets banged up, we're going to A&M. Um, they moved Tubbs to tailback. Mm. And he played tailbacks. He had 27 carries for 155 yards against uh, Crazy. A- A&M that day. Um, and so, don't underestimate. You, you bring up Juan Davis. Don't. It's 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 hard to remember sometimes <clears throat> when we pigeonhole these guys into their positions that they, the high school they came out of, they probably were really versatile. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and so the the some of the potential is there. I I talk about look. I actually mentioned this to a friend of mine the other day. Um, I go and is the best running back on the Cowboys roster right now, Michael Parsons. <laughs> if you lined Michael Parsons up at tailback. And gave him 20 carries. He'll have a heyday. <laughs> There's a video. I think he would gain 100 yards. Yeah. I yeah. really do. Out right now, he raced Trayvon Diggs and won. Oh, and, right. and, you know, he, he, he kind of joked about it the other day and said, hey, when I sign my next contract, when I get ready to end my career, I think I want to move to running back. Um, and I, I legit, I, I look at the running back room right now, I legit say, Michael Parsons might be the best running back on the roster. Um, so it, 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 it is going to be interesting to watch the season. I certainly expect Jaden Blue yeah. to get 75% of the carries this season. Um, I knock on wood. I don't want to see him get hurt because um, – no, uh, If I, he goes down. If he goes down, we're in big trouble. That's the problem. PWOs, get problem. ready. <laughs> no, <laughs> facts, though. Colin Page, you know, local kid. Colin yeah. Page, mm-hmm. Anderson High School, I believe. No. Uh, yeah, walk on. <laughs> Let's do it. Still on the roster. I mean, I'm not rooting for. Apparently, I mean, sources say that he scored a couple touchdowns in the scrimmage this past weekend. Like, he, he showed up. Mm-hmm. And so, um, maybe he gets a, a shot, you yeah. know, a walk on. But uh, I totally see your point, though. Like, mm-hmm. a guy like Juan Davis coming in, a guy like Ryan Nibley, who has a lot of speed, uh-huh. you know, like, they could be game changers. And I think of a guy like Roshan Johnson. Like, mm-hmm. uh-huh. he's quarterback. That's exactly. He right. was a quarterback, you know. Uh, and it's just like, okay, he was versatile enough to run quarterback power in high school and stuff like that. And so when you move him to running back, it was a it was a change. Mm-hmm. But now he's in the league. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an NFL, he's an NFL running NFL back. Running back. Yeah, exactly. What, what about that guy, Nick Sanders, that played baseball? Yeah. That mm-hmm. came over. Are we, He's in that room, too. Are mm-hmm. we fans? I mean, he, they put him on the team. He's athletic, right? Yeah. Yeah, Nick had They the, have him as running back. 
Yeah. And he he played in high school. Like he played football in high school. He was a really he was a, he was a stud in where, high school. Where do you Waco, out there oh, in Waco. He's a, so he's a Texas guy um, too. I want to say Waco High or Waco La Vega, uh, one of the two. But um, yeah, I actually talked to him about a couple weeks ago before uh-huh. he announced that he was going to be in football. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, he just he's just a competitor. Okay. Like he just wants to go out there and ball. Um, and the question is like. You haven't played ball. You haven't played football in a couple of years. So can you take a hit? You know that that is a legit thing. Yes. You know? Like, yeah. <laughs> and you're not taking a hit from 15, 16, 17 year olds anymore. Hey, you want to ask Bo Jackson that to his face? Okay. <laughs> your point. You're right. But your point uh, is Bo Jackson. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's Nick Sanders. Two completely different people. Yes, sir. Um, but like, it's a real thing, though. You yeah. know, yeah. at running back, you're not mm-hmm. dishing hits. You're taking hits. <laughs> so not only are you out of the game for a couple of years, but now you're going to be getting hit by people twice as hard and twice as twice as powerful. What, what, um, what does he look like? Stature or is he wicked fast? I don't know. No, like, he's he a, so, he a solid build. No, for sure. Like, he's a catcher. Yeah, he's a solid build. Um, he definitely has like muscle on him. Like he he's not like skinny. Um, yeah. but at, at the end of the day, like you got to take a hit. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it's okay to be muscular, but. Can you take a hit? Don't forget, running backs literally play every offensive position except for quarterback. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. facts. Um, but like Travis was saying, the, the the room is fine as long as Jaden Blue stays healthy. Correct. And I I will go on the limb and say I believe with this injury, Jaden could win the dope I, I, I didn't. I, like, I don't want to put that. Most, I don't want to put the water. Like, you know. be, but it, look at it though. Look at it though, and let, let me let me get my back. Okay, like okay. two years ago, Bijan Robinson, Doke Walker were a winner. Last year, if yeah. we're being honest, mm-hmm. and we're not being homers, I'm not being a homer right now. If we're being honest and looking at stats, Jonathan Brooks would have won Doke Walker if he didn't get hurt. Correct. Yeah. Ollie Gordon had a great second half of the year, yeah. but Jonathan was consistent the whole year, and he was on track. To mm-hmm. reach about 1,500 yards rushing. It's so funny you say that. There's a YouTube video that says Jaden Blue, fastest running back mm-hmm. in all of college football. Yes. And, yeah. and people remember that 69 yarder that he, that he, uh, in the 57, the seven win over Texas Tech, mm-hmm. he had that 69 yard run. I mean, I'm, I'm all about the fan. He, he peaked at 23 a, miles an hour. I, yeah, as a fan. Track guy, how, how fast is that? That's, that's fast. That's <laughs> fast. Isn't that, that's faster than Tyreek, isn't it? I think it's uh, close. It's, I, it's think. Cl- it's cl- I, I think I think Tyreek and DK we're, we're in the 30s. Yeah, yeah. I think 30s. The, I think no, no, no. Or, I thought the fastest guys. I those. thought they were only like 22, nah. 23. Yeah, no, no one's in 30s. No, they're, they're, in the, they're, they're all in the same ballpark oh, yeah. for sure. They're, they're fast. The they're yeah, fast. Yeah, they're all fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but and that's what I'm saying. Like Jaden Blue, what I've been hearing is that he is going. Like, he's a home run hitter every time he touches the football. Good, great. And you saw yeah. that last year. Like, yes, last year, he would go on a 50-yard touchdown run, 69-yard touchdown run. Every time he got those yeah. limited touches. So, all I can imagine mm-hmm. is if he gets more <laughs> touches, more touchdowns. You yeah. know what I'm do saying? You, that's do, you, just, do you think he's going to get more touches even with that receiver core they have this year? And I think that's what's going to help him yeah. because they have so many different yeah. weapons at well, receiver. Well, can you guys, for the lay fan – that may not know. So we know he's fast. Reggie yeah. Bush was fast. I don't want to say they're the same, but can y'all, Travis, uh, you sound like you're pretty up on him. Mm-hmm. Can can y'all explain to us what type of a runner Jaden Blue is then? Can you give us a, com- a comp so he's, we can understand? So Coach Choice has actually gave us a comp uh, to Char Choice, and he said his comp is Jameer Gibbs. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was actually perfect. I'm yes, not going to lie. Please. Think yeah. Gibbs <laughs> yes. and Jaden Blue are very, very similar. Okay. Yeah. And the twitchiness it's mm-hmm. not just he can run fast straight. Yeah. It's that he can move in a hole mm-hmm. fast. He's one of those guys. One cut, and he's gone. He's very elusive. And so, like, that type of quickness combined with the speed uh-huh. is very dangerous, and that's why you got a bunch of these long yes, touchdown runs. Yes, sir. Now, the question is, can he run between the tackles, yeah. right? Because now with Baxter gone, mm-hmm. he's going to be called to do that. Yeah. Um, and if he does run between the tackles, can he stay healthy? And that's going to be the question all season. I think that's going to be the big question for this running back room is what mm-hmm. between the tackles looks like. Because, you know, if, if, we, if we take out the, the unfortunate injuries and think about oh, what, what, what could we see, Quinn, Will, Quinn Weisner is another one. He played at DeSoto. Yeah. So he's mm-hmm. tested at the, at the heights of, yeah. of Texas high school football. And he can fly. Mm-hmm. If, you, if we think Jaden Blue is the fastest guy on the team – I don't know how he outruns a Quentin Weisner. 
Weisner is an absolute burner. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's going to be no shortage of speed. And by the way, how many times do we hear coaches talk about the running back in the flats is a part of your running game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. the opportunity is here okay. that we may see five and 600 yard receiving yards I'm glad out of said running that. backs. Because when you said what you said, I cringe. I wanted to argue with you about something else. Hopefully we'll, we'll get, it's the Texans. Uh, but I was just wondering is, just because you have a Ferrari and you want to use it as a daily driver, should you? And so, do we have to keep ramming him into the, the center of the line? Yeah. Can we be versatile with our play calls? Little dumps off to I, I when I play, man, I had a bunch of fast receivers, and I loved getting them into space, holding it just a little bit longer, just to dunk it to them, and then see those guys take off because I get the I get the the, the passing yards yeah. <laughs> for, for those yeah. guys. It's, it's so part of the run game now. I mm-hmm. love that, and I want to see that. Please don't keep running that guy into him because you know what? That takes a little bit off the speed. I mean, it's just it just no, wears it you. It wears you it's down. A wear and tear. So let's. I I'd like for us to be smart. Send a couple other battering rams in there every now and then, and and then we we, we do it. And quite frankly, Sarkees. So the second the second part of that is we know Sarkeesian knows how to use a running back who can catch the ball because we saw Bijan do it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, the other I mean, part Brooks, of Brooks did it a lot too last year. He, he, he did, and, and the other part of it is, is that Sarkeesian's history with running backs is really, really good. And, and I, I realized that before he came to Texas, it was at Alabama. So yeah. mm-hmm. maybe, maybe just the fact that he had the best <laughs> running backs in the country yeah. just makes yeah. it that way. Helps but, out. But, mm-hmm. but, but his running backs got. I mean, I think sometimes Sarkeesian gets pigeonholed into being part of this. New era offensive coordinator that's that's just um, mesmerized by throwing the football on every down. This is not the Houston run and shoot. Yeah, mm-hmm. these these are these offenses while they're spread based offenses and they're single setback and and they are mostly um, shotgun offenses. They are much more balanced and resemble much more of a balanced football. The difference today is that instead of trying to run 60 plays a game, they're trying to run 90 plays a game. Yeah. And that just means that you get more plays and you get and the passing game gives you bigger chunks. And so yes, do they skew from the from the Tom Landry Cowboys and their balance or the Jimmy Johnson Cowboys with Emmett Smith and the triplets where they wanted to have 25 carries a game and 28 passes a game and we go to the locker room with a win and that's a great day for everybody. That's just not the way it is anymore. Um, you're going to see more passes than you are runs, but you want to get balanced yardage mm-hmm. out of that yeah. and that's what Sarkeesian's I think has done a great job of doing during his career and you're right I mean he he likes to remind us all the time especially when we have questions about his running game and last year right mm-hmm. when, before the season started yeah. the question was was it going to be Brooks was it going to be CJ yeah. Baxter who was going to be the starter whoop de whoop yeah. and he always used to be like guys calm down Every year I've been a head coach, and I've looked this up, and he's not lying. He's not lying. Every year I've been a head coach, I've had a 1,000-yard rusher. That's right. That's exactly right. And Travis's point, people think of him as his passing guru. But if you look at the tape and you look at the stats, every single year, he's ever back, ever, going back to his Washington days, yeah. every year he's been a head coach, he's had a 1,000-yard rusher. And so, so he, he, he was cares about at it. At USC, 2001, 2003, he had Carson Palmer, and he had uh, Matt, Matt Leiner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But – Reggie Bush was there. Yeah. yeah. So, I think yeah. It, it, he knows what to do with a fast guy. No, nah, fact. <laughs> like, he exactly he knows, knows what, what to, do. to do. And then to your point about the whole running game and stuff like that, he loves to use receivers in the running game. You know, now, if we're being honest, that is a part of the running game. RPOs yes. is a part of the running game. Yes. And right. so, it's like, I've seen in practice, they're going to do swing passes to John T. Cook. They're going to do speed outs to Silas Bolden. Like, that five-yard gain to them is a run play. So, do we get, guys, do we have, the, for the lay person that may not be locked in, Texas, we're streaming all over. We got some. We got somebody down in in, uh, in South Florida listening. In. We got somebody in Mexico right now streaming. We got someone up in Washington State. Thanks for guys. What what what? My question is: When it comes to Jaden Blue and his mm-hmm. speed, mm-hmm. are people going to stack the line, or are people going to respect our wide receivers? Yeah, you can y'all talk. Can y'all talk receivers and let us know if people are going to stack the box for Jaden so he doesn't. Because we just lost Worthy 
and uh, Mitchell. Yeah, were the two that, that left. And Whittington. Don't and forget. Whittington. So, Ooh, by the way, Ooh. shout out Whittington. Yeah, he's been bro. looking good. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually, according to Pro Football Focus, the highest graded receiver mm-hmm. in all of preseason yeah. um, oh. for week one. Okay, mm-hmm. that yeah. helps. Yeah, he has six catches, 78 yards, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you, know, you know what's weird is when, um, when, when we had the running back injuries, first thing that popped into my mind was, Man, if we had Whittington one more year, I'd move him to the running back room, Lokita. and I'd give him the ball as often as I could from the running back position. Yeah. I lo- and you know, there, you know, Roshan Johnson graduated as one of the most beloved Longhorns on that team. Mm-hmm. Jordan Whittington graduated last year as one of the most beloved. And but there's a reason you become a beloved player somewhere. Could you just put your head down and do the work? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Whittington had those injury problems throughout his career, and it's great to see him in his career the way he did. Roshan. He wasn't going to be in the quarterback mix. He takes a, a move to running back. He plugs along, and he's never the star, but he, he's he's he in the league. He he's, exactly. Um, and so you just got to love it about the guys like that. We're going to find somebody like that on this team as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to fall in love with somebody for what they do with this team. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I trust. You know, look, Sark's giving me no reason. Uh, to think that he's not going to figure out a way to spread the ball around. And so to your question, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know how you put eight men in the box anymore in the game of college football. Mm-hmm. Everybody goes three wide all the time. I, when's, I, maybe sometimes on third and one and fourth and one, you see two tight end sets and two men in the backfield. And you, yeah. But, man, it's, on first and ten, even when you know that they want to come out and run the ball to pull time off the clock, you can't afford to put eight in the box because too many offensive coordinators are willing to throw the ball in every situation. Do you guys remember if teams were selling out and, and paying a little too much attention to Bijan? Because I'm thinking of the last great running backs that have come out of not only just college football, but UT. So I do remember that. Like, I do remember watching games and, and heck, like, I'm, I'm shooting a game. So, like... Yes, people stacked the box against Bijan's team because one, they didn't trust the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Quinn Quinn wasn't Quinn right. that he is now. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, you're talking about a freshman Quinn, well, redshirt sophomore Quinn, whatever he was. Yeah. Um, with with no experience, right? Yeah. That was his first year being a college quarterback, and so also the receiving core. You have a Xavier Worthy who they just could not get on the same page with the deep ball. Um, so you were scared of Xavier, but you kind of weren't at the same time. Um. He was also playing with a broken hand that year yeah. that no one knew about until mm-hmm. Sark wanted to share that information with us after the season. Like It would have yeah. been great to know during the season. <laughs> exactly. um, so we wouldn't be bashing the kid <laughs> the whole right. time. Um, but anyways, no one else outside of Xavier was really a threat. You had Jay Witt in that team, mm-hmm. but it, yeah. as a number two, Jay Witt's not as effective as a number three. Correct. Yeah. You know yeah. what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. And so, yeah, they definitely stacked the box against Bijan because they, they also knew they had Roshan yeah. back there, too. So you have to stack the box against both of these running backs. It was much easier to walk your safety down against that team. If if you walked a safety down against Quinn Ewers today yeah. with, mm-hmm. the, with the type of speed, and, and I, these are all – it's a brand new – the top five receivers from last year's team are all gone. This is a brand new receiving core. But I guarantee you from day one, Michigan is not going to disrespect their passing game Mm-mm. in week no. two. Because if they do, they know that it can get out of hand quickly. Because um, all it takes – I mean, these are these are experienced receivers with an experienced quarterback. Mm-hmm. And they find a way to find uh, uh, a way to jail quick. So, uh, the, the only thing I was – I, the only other thing I want to add and ask you guys is because you guys are more familiar with that Texas roster. So, uh, as I said, 01 to 03, he was at USC. He left. He went to the Raiders for that one year. That was the year uh, Rich Gannon got hurt, and then they had to go with Kerry. Um, and then he went back to USC. And then and then he had Lindale White Yay. and Reggie Bush. Uh-huh. So, he knew, let me use my battering ram, and then I got my quick guy. Is there anybody that is the battering ram, though, that you guys might be interested in as a batter, battering ram? And that's the question right now, right? Like, who's going to become that? Because in that running back room, that was C.J. Baxter. Um, and so, you know, the freshman Jared Gibson is expected to be something like that. He's a, This kid's huge. Okay. Oh, um, good, I good. Mean, he's, he's jacked. Bro. That's what I like. I'm like, you're 18, you're yeah. 19. <laughs> yeah, there it is. That's not fair. Um <laughs> 
from South Florida, by oh, the way. Uh, okay. Talk about whoever listening out there in Florida. So he should, have, he should um, have some speed with him too, huh? He should, but like oh, at the end of the day, it's still <laughs> a, yeah. stop being stereotypical. <laughs> it's still it's a true, freshman, though, though yeah. right? At the end of the day, it's still a freshman, yeah. so you don't want to put too much on his plate. He fumbled in the scrimmage this past weekend. Both freshmen did actually. Oh. Him and Christian Clark. It's Miami. Um, okay, Th- that listener. Okay, Th- they literally are the three hundred five. Got you. Got you. Got you. <laughs> Thanks for listening, Miami. Um, and so yeah, like Jarek's supposed to be the guy. Juan Davis, like Travis mentioning, could be the guy. I think Juan could be more of a passing blocking probably so. role You're probably you know, right. at running back but yeah. um at the end of the day that's the problem with this team right now we don't really have i don't want to say we they don't really have a guy like that which is funny because the guy they had transferred uh savion red uh-huh. the prime yeah. example what? of dang i wish we uh-huh. still had savion red exactly in this situation he was a power back. He was a guy in goal line. He was a guy where if you need a yard, go give him the ball. He transfers to get a better opportunity, which I understand why he transferred. You know, you mm-hmm. see all these running backs in the room. It's 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 clouded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's 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 a crowded room. Um, and so he wanted to play at Nevada, and he's probably going to start mm-hmm. at Nevada. Uh-huh. Um, and so props to him. But I know he's looking at from the outside looking in right now like dang mm-hmm. if i didn't leave <laughs> i could have been the, the one two punch with Jaden yeah. right now uh, but you can't predict that so yeah that's that's gonna be the biggest question going to michigan can you get a yard right can you get two yards on third and two on third and one against that michigan defense mason graham against mason yeah, graham mason in the graham. middle that's mm-hmm. going to be a top five pick in the league yeah can you get a yard and that's something that's going to get answered on week two mm-hmm. so just just a little so juan davis Played high school quarterback. He played at Fort Worth Everman. Oh, mm. <clears throat> ran uh, ran ran essentially a, a zone read yeah. type of offense. And so, I mean, he had um, in the playoffs against Seguin one year. He and, uh, they were, of course they were five A, knowing six A is the, is the top division. So it's a five A, and so it's not the top division. But he had a he had a playoff game where he had twelve carries for one hundred thirty five yards. Okay. Um, and so I think that you know, sort of in in the Roshan style of this is a guy who's sat behind an offensive line before and is red for holes. That's kind of the yeah. the, the, the move from one and he's buried he's a senior, he's buried on the depth chart at, at tight end. He's really athletic. This is an excellent opportunity to maybe get him some more touches for for a career. Um, that, you know, yeah. More than likely, he feels more of a third down back role in a, in a, in a blocking scheme, and then he can be a flare out type of guy as a check down. Um, but he's but he's a guy who sat behind a lot of scrimmage and looked for holes before. So that's kind of a little bit of history behind that move. And before we go to break, I just want to say this one thing when it comes to Juan Davis. Sarkeesian, multiple times, mm-hmm. has mentioned Juan Davis being a guy that has impressed him in practice, impressed him in training camp, has improved so much from two years ago, even from last year. And his name keeps coming up in these press seconds. conferences. And I think mm-hmm. that means something. Yeah. You know, when mm-hmm. coaches continue to name players out loud, they try not to segregate a certain player because they want to make it as a team. Yeah. yeah. But when they shout somebody out multiple times, you got to listen and acknowledge that. Yeah. And so I think this is his opportunity to show, look, we've seen your growth. Fans view. K-A-Z-I 88.7 Travis Kent alongside Jamal January KBU 24's Corey Mose Douglas Washington keeping us on the air sounding good we appreciate Douglas as always um, we've got uh, we, we, we talked Texas football we're going to talk just a little bit of the rest of college football I think next week and the week after are going to be heavy college football yeah. because we're going to because that season starts earlier. So I don't want to take too much time away from us talking a little bit about NFL training camps as well. But you guys have any um, before we get to a special giveaway we're going to have here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, you guys have anything else college football wise y'all wanted to touch on? Yeah, I I just want to know uh, is it me or? Is there a little more excitement around the city, around Longhorn Nation, about being in the SEC and this season? Now, you guys, I moved here three years ago, uh, so I want to defer to all three of you for living around here. I know you grew up in Houston, Corey, but Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say because you've been here. Like, it just seems like everyone is so excited because – I, I have some inside connects, you know, over at UT, and it does it, it looks like it's – I had a, cho- a chance to go to a few games last year. I don't mean to brag. I don't mean to big braggadocious. I'm just trying to state that this year, man, it's like somebody turned off the faucet. I, I, I'm not getting any kind of looks. <laughs> so I was just kind of – now I'm looking for 
I, you know, free stuff. This is what I was getting. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you know, homeboy hookups. But uh, so that just tells me how hot the tickets are. Yeah. I mean, I used to live, you know, I moved here from Georgia. So at that Georgia game, I was like, man, that, you know, that'd be awesome. So is it, are you guys feeling that? Because I just, I don't, I don't know if it's because we live here now that it feels that way, but it just seems like there's so much excitement. Nothing against the Big 12, but I just feel like everyone is just, a little more excited yeah. now. Mm-hmm. I think there's definitely more outside noise. Okay. I think because mm-hmm. they're expecting more from Texas. It's yeah. been a long time. I, I can't remember the exact year. Maybe Travis knows. I, I want to say like back in 08 or 09 when they've been ranked this high in the preseason poll. I mean, yeah. number four is something that we haven't seen in the state of Texas for the university in a while. Okay. Um, and you add that on top of being in a new conference – on top of them having legit shots of winning the national championship, mm-hmm. yeah, everyone not just, is excited. Not just a new conference, the the conference. national championship, yeah. Yeah. you know, and the conference, right? You know, with the with the year when Alabama's not Bama, right? With yeah. the year where Georgia not coming off a national championship, so yeah. there is hopes of like there's not like a juggernaut. Mm-hmm. Now, I will go on to say Georgia's a scary team they are. Um, they are. because they have legit motivation yes. uh, that's what makes them scary to me not yes. because of talent because i think texas goes toe-to-toe with the talent but because of their motivation of not even making the playoff last yep. year and feeling mm-hmm. disrespected i think that's what makes them terrifying okay um and so yeah george is the team that I, I would say is the best team in the league or in the nation and um outside of that though i think it's an open it's an open competition yeah uh, and yeah. i think texas fans can feel that Mm-hmm. That, so, so, so mine was just that I know we're ultimately I ended up talking about Texas again, but I just wanted to, to say the SEC is real. Mm-hmm. Like it's exciting. And now we are a part of it. Mm-hmm. That's why we are a little more excited because, man, we're rolling with the big boys. Yeah. Even though you don't got to play a lot of them. And I think that's another reason why Texas fans are excited because yeah. the schedule kind of favors Texas. Yes, it does. Mm-hmm. I mean, you only got to play Georgia. Mm-hmm. And, I mean... Uh. There's not really another team that's really scary, you oh know. You know, Mississippi, Mississippi State, Arkansas, yeah. Vanderbilt, yeah. Eh, don't got to play Ole Miss, don't got to play Missouri, mm-hmm. don't got to play Alabama. Like, this schedule is very favorable for UT. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you just got to get past the teams you got to get past and that you should beat. Don't let A&M trip you up, yeah. and don't let Oklahoma trip you up. So, just get through that Michigan game September 7th. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. just get through that. If get they through get that through game. that. Even though that game Colorado doesn't really State, mean much, Michigan. If we're I being mean, honest, but if you're three and zero with the playoff, with the playoff, it doesn't mean playoff. It doesn't really mean much. Like you can lose that game to Michigan and be totally fine, exactly um, and true. still make arguably oh, sorry, the top four. I was talking about the hype, the okay, hype, the hype, the hype oh, machine. Yeah. If the hype yeah. machine, because they could, they literally <coughs> could be. Well, we're not worried about Mississippi State, no, right? Not worried about. So they could be five and zero going into that Oklahoma game yeah. and still lose. Oof. I mean. Oh the no! They could the exactly. They could be five and zero. Mr. Yeah. Oklahoma's not there. Sixteenth rank Oklahoma. I mean, we're I, I I just don't think they have a. No, nah, I don't. Think and so. every time I don't think they have a shot, Oklahoma <laughs> makes it a shot. <laughs> but but legit, like with Jackson Arnold at their quarterback, yeah. freshman quarterback, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be very tough for that freshman to, to kind of handle that situation. Um, but yeah, let's get to the pro though. Let's get to uh, the league. Yeah. Um, a lot of good things happen around the league, especially for you know former Longhorns. But just getting a look at mm. some new quarterbacks. Uh, unfortunately, you know, Jaden McCarthy getting out with the torn meniscus. Mm-hmm. Um, it, hate man. that. Hate that for the Vikings, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, hate that for Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Just a guy that continues not to have consistent quarterback play. Because I don't know if you saw, did you see the play where J.J. actually threw the deep ball for a touchdown and how excited Justin was yeah. on the sideline? Yeah, so. he wants to be there. He signed that contract. Like, he <clears throat> wants to be a Viking, and he just wants to win. Mm-hmm. And you learned that in that receiver um, documentary on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And you got to – I love that because you got to get in a little bit of his life. And I it's know. like he has so much talent. I want to give you all some insight. I got about two or three fraternity brothers, Corey, that are from Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> and a little inside info from Vikings fans. They all went <sighs> on that pass yeah. because they didn't know what they was getting. No one knew. What, no one knew. And mm-hmm. we talked about it on this show how the whole season last year he didn't throw for over 250 yards. Yeah. He didn't have to. Room. So yeah. we didn't know what he had, but even they didn't know what they had. I mean, everyone was like, oh, yeah, we got our guy. We got our guy coming off of Natty, but they didn't know. I will say this, though. What I didn't know is who they had was O'Connell. Like, Kevin O'Connell is a guy that I wholeheartedly believe whoever's 
playing quarterback, we'll be prepared and yeah. we'll be able to make throws because he gets people open mm-hmm. in the NFL. I mean, go back last year, Josh Dobbs, like prime example, mm-hmm. goes out there with minimal practice, don't know his teammates' names, and <laughs> wins a game. <laughs> Talk uh, about a real redeemer. A real redeemer. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Even the guy after Josh Dobbs, uh, forgot, uh, Mullins, I think that's what his name is. Yeah. Um, Won a game yeah. because of O'Connell. Like, O'Connell is a top-tier coach, and that's another reason why I hate that they keep getting injuries because he's not being able to show how great of a coach he is because he's over here patching stuff together. Yeah. Now, it's still working, but it's barely working. And so, yeah, I, I, I hate that for them. I like Darnold, though. I feel like Darnold is still a viable quarterback in the NFL. Samuel? I I don't know. I, I don't, I don't we'll mind see. Sam. But uh, just going around as we continue the conversation, Bo Nix looks solid. I think Sean Ooh, Payton continues to prove it. He's a great, yes. he's a great head coach. He knows what the heck he's doing, um, and he's going to make Bo Nix getting good mm-hmm. situations. And he's not going to put him in the fire. He's mm-hmm. going to scheme up stuff to make it easy for him. You know who's really shocking me though? Joe Milton. Okay, yeah, uh, New England. <coughs> oh, uh, like, I, I, uh, I was going to talk New England, but I was going to say Drake May. You don't like, I mean, but but let's let's do Milton. I mean, like, I just. <laughs> The dude's been balling. <laughs> yeah. like, He's become Drake. a fan favorite out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drake, Drake looks scared. I don't know if it's just me. <laughs> he looks scared to me. To me, he he looks like he's not stepping up. In, and this is what I look for with rookie quarterbacks, especially in preseason. Are you stepping up in the pocket? Mm-hmm. Are you not throwing the ball away when you don't really have to in that situation? Um, and every time I watch Drake. He's escaping the pocket from the side, running towards the sidelines, and not really trying to make a play, but not trying to make a mistake, Mm -hmm. which you can't play that way in the NFL. Like, for example, Jalen Hurts, right? Everyone's talking about how Jalen doesn't doesn't have an interception in training camp. He sure doesn't. I don't know if that's a good thing, right? (laughs) I mean, be honest, uh, Travis. I don't know if that's a good thing. You're not taking chances. You're not taking chances. That's right. This doesn't matter. Yeah. Not, this time, this period, training camp, preseason, it doesn't matter. There's no reason to be captain check down during practice. There's during, no during, reason. During <laughs> Aaron out. There's no, no, I'm being dead serious. No, though. no, because like, there are guys trying to make the team, mm-hmm. and they need some st- – Go high point a ball. They need the. They need these opportunities. Yeah. Less about the other person. I'm talking about for Jalen. Mm-hmm. For mm-hmm. Jalen, I need you to be confident enough to say I can fit this ball in this window. Yeah, I can put this ball over the top of this defender and not get it picked off. For you not even trying to do it, that's nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. Because to me, that shows you don't have confidence in yourself to make that throw. That's where it all begins. You got to at least throw it. To make a spectacular play. If you're not doing that and you're playing scared, that's worrisome. And so, yeah, I just think with a lot of these rookie quarterbacks, you kind of see that. Shout out Spencer Rattler. Yeah. He had a great performance. Yeah. Um, a lot of people wrote him off a long time ago. But I, did, he I can, did in college. I ain't going to lie. He continues to prove people wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, he went to the black hole of college. He went to South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was in the South Carolina National Guard. If y'all don't know, they share their main facility is the parking lot is the, the Gamecock Stadium parking lot. Really? I, so I I, that's crazy. I thought Rattler, I've been a fan of Rattler. I like Rattler, I, man. I, that's the only reason. I don't want to be like a, a homer just because he looked good there. Mm-hmm. I got I to gotta be honest. Going back to that uh, that ESPN quarterback yeah. show that he yeah, did yeah. in high school, I've never been a fan of oh, yeah. Special yeah, it, was look oh. it was a bad look for him. It was a bad look for him. It was a bad look for him. Beyond the Lights. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, I don't think he ever should have left Oklahoma. I know Oklahoma fans were down on him. I thought he would have. And, honest, obviously, he – the the head coaching position was willing was wanting to go with the hot hand any chance he had yeah and so I think he probably did need to leave Oklahoma I don't think he made a great choice in going to South Carolina though because I think most people thought that after Spurrier left South Carolina just closed their program down I don't mm, even yeah. think that. <laughs> I, I don't think there was an opportunity for him to stay at OU just because I was at that um I was actually at that river rivalry game where he lost the job to Caleb and yep. Caleb made that stupid long run the very game. first play oh, of the game. As soon as, and they brought Spencer Rattler back in for a two point conversion. The crowd the was crowd, booing. They were booing. I was there too. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I was like, oh, for sure. Dude. And speaking yeah. on that note, though, Caleb, 
they got a guy. Mm-hmm. They uh-huh. got a guy. Hey, what, what'd you I mean, say? Take the Bears under? Wait a you minute. Still got hey, that? Hey, no, I'm still saying take the Bears under, though. Two. Uh, you weren't here then because that's when you were in Chicago. Mm-hmm. But we did talk about it, and you two told me y- y'all don't want to see nothing until the regular season regular starts. Season. No, so I don't can't get too high. I don't give a rip. I'm getting high right now. I, I like the talent, but I, I did ask y'all. Like, remember, I asked y'all that question. I was like, "Hey, are yeah. we gonna get on the hype train for Chicago?" We'll and see. y'all both, y'all didn't want to give it to me. But it's funny because literally, he, Corey said, "I said take the under, take the under," because you're gonna watch Hard Knocks and the. I'm literally doing it. You're gonna watch Hard Knocks and the Bears. I'm gonna get infatuated, bro. I'm gonna get infatuated. Yeah. Yeah. Hard that Knocks talent. I mean, this. Have you watched Hard Knocks? Kena, no, I have not. Oh my goodness, have you watched Hard Knocks? No, I haven't watched. Lord have mercy. Guys. Are you like me? I wait until I wait and watch it all at one time. Hell no! No, you watch it. I watch no, episode after episode. No. Oh, at no. Tuesday at nine o'clock. I am logged no, in. I'm with Travis. You gotta, you gotta, you I gotta binge wait. that. I binge I can't it. wait. That's, that's like, just what I want to. I want to keep up with it because, like, I watch no, the I, highlights. I get it. And I watch the games in the preseason. It, it, it. I think it probably does serve. It's probably so. It's probably a better watch. Watching it every week, I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. I just, I have a hard time um, making time in my uh, life just to. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not you anymore, Corey. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm old, a family. I'm, yeah. I'm, family. I'm, I'm old guy. I got a kid. I got a senior in high school. I got yeah. a kid at college. Yeah, I got stuff right. to do. I'm I got. Putting, I'm putting kids to bed yeah, Tuesday night so. at nine o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> I just got in from softball practice. Yeah, no, I, I think that's another no, reason that's, why that's I'm doing it. Though. That's yeah. right, man. I just yeah. realized that. But I will say, like, Travis, <laughs> just what? ruined. I thought I was still. I thought I still was Corey. But Jamal's right though. Like when I'm watching Hard Knocks. I'm like, dang, bro. Mm-hmm. Because you saw, you saw the ES, you saw, you saw these reports that now you're seeing the backstory of. So I yeah, totally, uh, I uh, totally get it. I mean, there's one scene in there where it's in the middle of the game, um, in that first preseason game, no second one because they played Texans in the Hall mm-hmm. of Fame game, where they come to the sideline. Roma Dunze runs like a slant route, and mm-hmm. Caleb pulls him aside and goes to the whiteboard. Is like, hey, if you do this with this defender. And cut it at five instead of cutting it at seven. I'm gonna hit you right mm-hmm. there. And that conversation with yeah. the rookie quarterback mm-hmm. is surprising to me to know that he's that intellectual about the offense already. They got a gym. That they are able mm-hmm. to now make a just. Remember, two weeks ago, Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson was having the same conversation. Uh-huh. They sure were. At yeah, practice. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And now you have Caleb doing it mm-hmm. as a rookie. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Like, you, you see flashes of why he's considered to be a great quarterback. Yeah. And I hate that. Like, I like his personality. <laughs> like, because everyone pointed him to be a weirdo. Yeah. Right. And he's not really. He's a weirdo, yeah. yeah. But he's not like a standoffish weirdo. Like, he's like a weirdo. It's like, yeah, that's my brody. Like, he, he's just that way. You think they can win the division? No. They're not winning the division. Well, no. I don't know. Lions got some injuries. Yeah, nah. Well, Jameer Gibbs should be fine. Yeah. So, I, that worried me when that yeah. uh, report came out. But yeah. it's just a little hammy. Um, and I don't think they're better than the Packers. Oh, yeah, I think the Packers are still the Packers. All right. We got like 10 or 12 yeah. minutes left in the show. And we got two tickets oh, that, oh. We, that we can give away. Let's do it. No, Corey. You cannot call in. <laughs> Sep- <laughs> September 28th. <laughs> September 28th. Al Wash, Big Al, was here last week to talk to us about the State Fair Classic. Uh, Grambling versus Prairie View. Uh, we've got two tickets to give away. 6 p.m. kickoff. Big Daddy Kane. Lots going on. Oh. Going to be a big time out of the State Fair. Um, to um, Let's get a caller. Um, who can, uh, let's see. Um, there have been two first-round picks from out of Grambling. Mm. One would be pretty easy. Mm-hmm. I, I'll find a way to give you bonus points if you get the other one. Because the other one was a first-round pick in the AFL draft. In fact, they were taking 1-1. They were one one in the AFL draft. One one. Wow. So if you can tell me, if you can tell us, one of the two first round draft picks. The other one's easy to get. All right. The other one, if you if you list, if you've been listening to this show for a year, you've heard this person on the air here. So yep. mm. two number one picks out of Grambling. If you can give us one of their names, if you give us the AFL name, I'll find a way to get some bonus for you mm. because because uh, um, that would be something you pulled out. Hey, we got a caller calling in. Uh-oh. Uh, they call, call they, back. Said, they said, maybe, maybe I don't know the answer. <laughs> uh, well, we did mention that one person already today on this broadcast. Yeah. Right they're listening. So, 512-836-2887. We got a caller calling in. Hey, caller, you there? 
You there? Uh, stay on the line. Stay on the line. Turn off your radio and stay on the line if you call in. We got somebody calling in again. Hey, hey, hey if you want to call in, you need to, once you once you hear. Oh, and we, we just picked up. Now we're putting you on the air. So, Carl, are you there? You there, Carl? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, Doug Williams. Doug Williams. Doug Williams was certainly a first-round pick um, out of Grambling into the NFL. So, Woo! yes, sir, you are the winner of two tickets. Hey, do you happen to know who that AFL number one one overall out of Grambling is? Um, are you old enough to to maybe know that name? I don't know that. It was the great Buck Buchanan. Ooh. Buck Buchanan was drafted 1-1 by the Kansas City Chiefs into the AFL. Um, played, he was all AFL, I think, four of his first five years. And then after the merger, um, he was an a, a all NFL player for the Kansas City Chiefs. I think he played 14 years for the Chiefs. Because I'm old, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. So, but Buck Buchanan, Buck Buchanan, a great defensive tackle out of Grambling, and so uh, we appreciate. It. So we're going to put you back on hold, and we'll get your information. We can get you the tickets, okay? Okay. All right, Carl. We appreciate it. Just stay on hold for just a second. Congratulations. All right, congratulations to you. Um, but yeah, we've got uh, uh, so we've got those tickets given away. Uh, we were talking. Uh, we were talking around the NFL. Mm -hmm. Anything else you saw uh, in any of the in any of the opening games? Um, any of these rookies? Anybody else catch your eye? From Dolphins running back. Good. Dolphins are my team, obviously. But yeah. Dolphins <laughs> running back from Tennessee. I forgot his name. It is slipping my mind. Something Jordan, I want to say, or uh, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's uh, something. I, I'm literally forgetting his name, but he was talked about coming in because you know, the, obviously, the Dolphins running back core has speed, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Hey, this guy's definitely can, he can be number three, and dude's fast, and I yeah. like his game a lot. He's aggressive too. He's definitely a lot more aggressive than AJ for sure. But I forgot his name. One, one thing that I would say to call my Trey Lance may not be a guy. Yeah. He may not be a guy. No, oh, um, okay. Uh, just watching that game with the Cowboys, he missed a couple throws that Dak definitely would have hit. Um, and one of the biggest things I've noticed, like going back to what I said about Jalen, right, not trying to make a mistake, there's no reason that the Cowboys should win the turnover margin by nearly five. Mm -hmm. And lose that game, okay? Because yeah. no one's taking shots on offense. Mm -hmm. he's, he's checking down, checking down, checking down. He's captain check down. Mm -hmm. He's captain check down. Um, two things stood out to me, right? First of all, let's talk about the fact that when we talk about Trey Lance, we're talking about a guy who had less than three hundred snaps in college. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and look, I'll, I'm, I'm not afraid to say this. Let's compare him to Bo Nix. Hey, we're not huge fans of Bo Nix in this room. We've talked about Bo Nix before. We kind of yeah. know who he is. Yeah. Um, Bo Nix has like, I don't know, eighteen hundred snaps in college mm -hmm. football. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we kind of know who he is. Uh, but on the flip side of that, we also know that he's got a little something there. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about Trey Lance. What I saw out of Trey Lance was if all you did was run sprint outs and bootlegs, mm -hmm. you, might have some, you might have something you can work with there. Yeah. yeah. If you don't ever have to just do five or seven step drop and step up and throw in the pocket, you might have something there. But that's not the NFL game. Mm -mm. The NFL game, I don't care how athletic you are, if you can't do five-step or seven-step drop and then step into the pocket and throw. And he is so insanely um, erratic yeah. from the pocket. Yeah. There's, he's he's high. Bad. He's low. His, it's, it's, there's, there's some athleticism there. Uh, but I, I just don't think you're going to be able to get it out of him in the quarterback position. It's I just, agree. Mm -hmm. It's just not there. And, you know, it sucks because, like, God, he has potential. Yeah. And I'm sure every GM is thinking the same thing. Like, God, he has potential. But we, we, no one can untap it, though. That's right. right. That's that's the problem. And I don't know if it's just a more sense of a different game plan. Like, he has to roll out. He has to be on the move. You can't keep him in the pocket because when he does stay in the pocket, he doesn't know how to use the pocket. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's the situation, right? Um get him out the pocket kind of like how Brock Purdy had to do his first year they did a lot of boots they did a lot of play actions um they didn't just let Brock sit back on a three-step five-step seven-step drop and sling it like yeah. they couldn't trust him to do that now they can 
could he knows the offense like the back of his hand. But it took some time. So yeah. I don't know with Trey. Um, like I said, it's only one game though. Yeah. So you know you can't really base too much off of it. He's going to get plenty of snaps in the preseason. Exactly. By the end of this preseason, we'll Look. we'll have a much better sense of. Um, of whether Trey Lance is going to have a contract in the NFL next year, or whether he's going to be out looking for a job in the in the regular marketplace. Yeah, that's, <laughs> no, that's for sure, though. Because yeah. this is probably going to be his last tape. He's going to be able to put down for somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, and With this my opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I will say this though: another thing to come my Texans, bro. Texans look good. <laughs> Texas look good. CJ just needed one drive. You yeah. know, he's like, all right, get him out of there. Do a touchdown pass to Tank Dale. We're back to where we were last year. If anyone is listening, if you play fantasy football, draft CJ Stroud. I'm That's telling you. you have to do. I'm yeah. telling you, draft CJ. And you can draft anybody. Now, my sources are saying Stephon Diggs is the number one receiver. Like it's Over not, Collins? It's not. Yeah, definitely over Collins. Um, mm-hmm. It's not a question. It's not a competition. It's clear that him and Diggs – have made a relationship yeah. and they are on the same page. And it's a contract. Uh, and it's a contract year. And it's a contract year. So Diggs is gonna ball out. Yes, I exactly. Think y'all need to trade John Mechie or Michi. Man, don't you know, don't disrespect Mechie. I'm not disrespecting him at all. He's not getting the I understand. PT. That's I understand. why. But we, you know, we, we like Mechie. Mechie's good. and look, let's look at the Texas running back room. Yeah, you never, what about that? you never know when someone may go down. True. And so, you, if you have a get Mechie as your number four, and that's Tank gets hurt or Nico uh, gets hurt, that's a pretty good number four. Because now he's playing significant minutes. Somebody in week three is going to come up with a hamstring. Yeah, and you're going to and and maybe they're not a scratch, mm-hmm. but they're probably only going to be limited to like thirty snaps. And you got to have somebody else in there you can count on. Um, I, I I'm the same way. I right now they're stacked. Mm-hmm. Um, if they if they get end of the season um, and somebody picks up the phone and calls them for a mid-season move maybe you entertain that um, but right now I think you just I think you know you're sitting on some riches at that position and you just say thank you Jesus yeah. and help help us get through this season stay healthy. Uh, and stay healthy and let's just let's move forward but yeah you're right I mean th- th- there's an opportunity that you can get something out of him for sure but I think for right now let's they, they should stay back They're, look I'm gonna watch the most Texans games I've watched in a lot of a lot of, should, a lot of time this year and I'm I'm legitimately I legitimately like this football team just you know what i like the most about this team what? the defense mm-hmm. and in a sense of if you watch a texans defense well, next time you watch a game mm-hmm. every time someone makes a tackle look yeah. at who's around the tackler yeah. there's not there's no solo tackles on that team it is a gang tackling team mm-hmm. and the same thing the 49ers do is the same thing that D'Amico has brought over from San Francisco to Houston. We're going to tackle. We're going to fly around. And then we're going to be all around the ball yeah. on defense. We're going to swarm it. Um, and you pair that speed at the linebacker position now with a guy up front in Daniel Hunter who just came off a season with double-digit sacks on the opposite side of Will Anderson. And you can only have to, you only got to rush four. You don't got to bring extra pressure. So you have a defense that's seven back that swarms and a front four that's going to get to the quarterback. It's scary. Just because y'all did go into some nerd stuff, uh, on all of my fantasy football mock drafts, I keep ending up with that Houston defense. I would. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. a good defense. For whatever reason, when I'm taking it, now I might be going a little early. I have a, a special league. But, yeah, I've been ending up with them, and mm-hmm. I'm not mad about it. And my last so, take is my last take. Um, Derek Stingley will be considered a top three cornerback at the end of the season. No. No. <laughs> Guys. No. <laughs> no. Just the no. top three? No. Top Consider three. maybe. I just want to say no. congratulations to Daryl Dawson. Oh, okay. right. He won the tickets. Okay. Daryl Dawson, he's from right here in Austin, Texas. Uh, he's gonna win. He won those two tickets. Gentlemen, he says he's going to take his son. I asked him, who is he going to go? Awesome. He's going to awesome. take his son. So he's pretty excited to go. And he's not afraid. He said, come at me. Come get me, bro. <laughs> he doesn't mind us telling people his name. Because he, you know, I said, oh, all your friends are going to want to come get tickets now. He's like, come at me, bro. I'm taking my son. <laughs> so I like that. That sounds good. Sounds good. Well, um, you know, we, I talked about him a lot last year, too. Look, I... I I, I want to continue to give props to D'Amico Ryan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The front office has done a really good job of collecting talent. Mm-hmm. D'Amico Ryan's has done, I think, 
from the day he was announced as head coach, he's made he has made a lot of really good, smart moves. He's good in front of a microphone. He's clearly good on the field. He makes I, it's I, I I'm, I've been very very impressed. I I thought I was going to be impressed by him. And he hasn't disappointed me. Mm-hmm. He just—he was a player that I always respected watching, um, and he's done a fantastic job as a head coach. Uh, you know, I just—I want to make sure. Um, I mean, they're—they're they're amassing talent, um, and I think they've got the potential uh, to be a real contender at the end of this season uh, with a young quarterback who is already playing above his experience level. Um, I just I, I, this coaching staff all the way around has done a really good job. I just I I, I, pro, I may here's a, here's a bold prediction. Oh oh, by midway through the season, I'll be more interested in the Texans than the Cowboys. Whoa! Not that right already. Yeah, I was trying to say. Can he start the season? Can, yeah, can, can, start the season can I get to week one, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> We gotta get we gotta get out of here. Yeah, we do. We gotta get out of here yeah. for Giannis. We appreciate all the calls. Call we appreciate all the talk.